This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Welcome to St. Stephen's Church in Burke, Virginia, in this live stream service for the third Sunday of Easter for April the 18th. We are in the midst of a great 50-day celebration as we are celebrating the great 50 days from the beginning of Easter Sunday through Pentecost. I'm Pastor Rob Robertson, and on behalf of the worship team this morning, welcome. We are grateful for the gift of your presence today. Today, I am pleased to announce the return of in-person worship outdoors on May the 2nd. That is two weeks from today. We will continue with our live streams at 11 a.m., but weather permitting, we will have worship outdoors on the grounds here at St. Stephen's at 9 a.m. And that we will have an opportunity after worship in our time of chat to talk more about the details of that service, those types of services. Now, of course, St. Stephen's continues to work towards returning to in-person worship in the sanctuary. And I'm so very grateful for the 151 families that were part of the survey that closed on Wednesday. And we will talk about some of the information that we have learned from that survey also after worship today. Now, Mother's Day is three weeks away, and we encourage you to send in pictures of your mother or of those women in your lives that have been like mothers to you. We will, in today's email, you can find out more about how to upload those pictures so that they can be part of our Mother's Day celebration. We are also seeking Hope is Alive pictures. And so as you see things springing up and the hope of of spring and hope is alive that we know in Jesus Christ, please take a shot and, and also send us those pictures as well. Now we prepare our hearts and our minds for worship. Our prelude is holy, holy, holy.
Good morning. Please join me in the call to worship and the opening prayer as displayed on your screen. Lord, come and walk with us today. We need your presence on the long road. The road between the place where all is lost and the place of resurrection. Like the disciples walking on the road to Emmaus, we are in need of your company. Jesus, stand among us in your risen power. Let this time of worship be a hallowed time. Let us pray. Holy God, we are Easter people, people of hope and resurrection. But a lot of days still seem like Good Friday. We feel stuck in pain and loss, fear and anxiety, worry and doubt. Resurrection power seems to be in short supply, and we are not sure how your power impacts the difficulties and suffering we face. Renew us again, dear friend. Come alongside us and speak words of grace and truth to us. Open our eyes to your constant presence and remind us that you are always working out your redemptive purposes in our lives and in our world. Amen. Our opening song is All My Hope. I've been held by the Savior I've felt fire from above I've been down to the river I ain't the same a prodigal return
Church family, I invite you now to join me in a time of prayer where we will lift up petitions of prayer and end by saying the Lord's Prayer that Jesus taught us together. So I invite you now to go before the throne of God with me. Almighty Lord, we come to you this day to give you honor and to give you glory, to worship you and you alone, the creator of heaven and earth, of everything and everyone here. To worship and celebrate Jesus Christ, our Savior, who has given us redemption, salvation in the midst of a broken world through his sacrifice. So Lord, we come to you with all this on our heart, but we know that there's so much more that pulls at us today. Stress, heartache, depression, great joys, new births in our families, new jobs, losing jobs. There's much going on in this world, so Lord, do not let us turn a blind eye, whether it is to the suffering of our friends and our neighbors on the news, or for the suffering and the joys that don't make it to the eye of the news. Let us be walking with you, Lord. I lift up this church that we continue to seek you first above all, and that by seeking you, you provide us with eyes like you to see the world around us, to see where hope springs up out of the midst of darkness and where we can be those seeds of hope. So God, do not let us turn a blind eye, but let us be filled with grace. Let us be filled with the passion of the Holy Spirit, and let us be filled with patience. Lord, there is so much more that we lift up to you in this time, that which weighs our hearts and our minds, and we lift them up to you now. And we pray. We pray for all of this and so much more. Knowing that you are in control, that you have all the power, and that you answer our prayers. We have seen it in our life. We have seen it in the lives of others. And we were taught the importance of prayer through your scripture and by your son, Jesus. And so now together as the body of Christ, we lift up the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Good morning, boys and girls. I'm Pastor Rob Robertson. Pastor Gian Kim is on vacation today, and I am so grateful to bring you the children's message. Now, I've got a question for you. What is the favorite game that you play? When I was a child your age, my favorite game was hide and seek. Boy, I played hide and seek all the time with my friends. Did anyone say hide and seek was your favorite game? Well, someone would be it, right? And they would count to 10 or 20 or 100, and then everybody would go and hide. And that person that was it would have to go and find everyone. Well, that when I was thinking about that game, it made me wonder if God and Jesus always knows where we are. Can we hide from God and can we hide from Jesus? Well, the answer is no. God always knows where we are. Jesus always knows where we are. And in today's lesson, our Bible lesson today, we learn about two disciples who were walking from Jerusalem very, very sad. 
and Jesus found them, and he walked with them. And he told them about the story of the Bible and that how it pointed to him as God's Messiah. And then, when they had a meal together that evening, they realized that it wasn't a stranger, but it was Jesus when he broke the bread. We have a lot to be thankful for, but one of the most important things is God is always with us. And we want to pray about that, and we want to give thanks today. Let's do our echo prayer. I invite you to to pray after me. Dear God, we thank you. We thank you that Jesus always knows where we are. That there's nowhere that we can go that is away from him. Thank you, Lord, for Jesus and his love for us. Amen. Giving is a spiritual discipline and a response to the amazing love and grace of God. And as we give today, we want to give thanks for how God continues to bless us and to bless this church and continue to move in us and move through us and out into the world. So let's pray for the life and the mission of St. Stephen's and the people that we are called to touch, that we don't even know yet, that are strangers to us right now. Let's pray. Lord God, we give you thanks for your calling. And Lord, we give so that others, people that are strangers to us, but not strangers to you, would know of your love and grace for them. Lord, continue to move in our fellowship, continue to move beyond our fellowship, touching the lives of our community and the world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Welcome back to our Easter series, Hope is Alive. Today, our scripture reading comes from the Gospel of Luke in the 24th chapter. It, it occurs on the same day of Jesus' resurrection. Now, as we prepare to read God's word, let us join together in our prayer for illumination, seeking God's illuminating grace. Let us pray. Spirit of wisdom and light, shine in the deepest recesses of our minds and hearts. Allow no hiddenness to remain in us. Instead, flood us with the truth of your word, which has the power to change and renew us. For truth is found in the word incarnate, and the truth will set us free. Amen. Our scripture reading comes from the, the Gospel of Luke in the 24th chapter, verses 13 through 35. Now, on that same day, two of them were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem, and talking with each other about all these things that had happened. While they were talking and discussing, Jesus himself came near and went with them. But their eyes were kept from recognizing him. And he said to them, what are you discussing with each other while you walk along? They stood still looking sad. Then one of them, whose name was Cleopas, answered him, are you the only stranger in Jerusalem who does not know the things that have taken place there in these days? He asked them, what things? They replied, the things about Jesus of Nazareth, who was a prophet mighty in deed and word before God and all the people, and how our chief priests and leaders handed him over to be condemned to death and, and crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. And yes, beside all this, it is now the third day since these things took place. Moreover, some women of our group astounded us. They were at the tomb early this morning. And when they did not find his body there, they came back and told us that they had indeed seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but they did not see him. Then he said to them, oh, how foolish you are and how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have declared. Was it not necessary that the Messiah should suffer these things and then enter into his glory? Then beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them the things about himself and all the scriptures. As they came near the village to which they were going, he walked ahead as if he were going on. But they urged him strongly, saying, Stay with us, because it is almost evening and the day is now nearly over. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at the table with them, he took bread, blessed and broke it, and gave it to them. Then their eyes were opened and they recognized him and he vanished from their sight. They said to each other, were not our hearts burning within us while he was talking to us on the road, while he was opening the scriptures to us? That same hour, they got up and returned to Jerusalem, and they found the eleven and their companions gathered together. They were saying, the Lord has risen indeed, and he has appeared to Simon. Then they told what had happened on the road and how he had been made known to them in the breaking of the bread. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Perhaps you know the name Viktor Frankl. Viktor Frankl was an Austrian neurologist, psychiatrist, and a Holocaust survivor. Between 1942 and 1945, Frankl labeled, uh, labored in four different death camps. And including Auschwitz. Frankel survived the ordeal, but his parents, his brother, and his pregnant wife all died 
in one of the camps. After World War II, Frankel wrote about his experiences in his best-selling book, Man's Search for Meaning, that was first published in 1946. At the time of Frankel's death in 1997, more than, one, uh, more than 10 million copies of the book had been published, and it had been translated into 24 different languages. Victor Frankl's memoir has riveted generations of readers with its description of the Nazi death camps, but also how he kept hope alive in such desperate situations. One of the stories that Frankl recounts occurs during a particularly difficult time in one of the camps. He had lost everything. Anything of value had been taken from him, a way to dehumanize and demoralize the prisoners. But one day, someone gave him a small piece of bread. About this episode, Frankel writes, I remember how a foreman secretly gave me a piece of bread which I knew he must have saved from his breakfast ration. It was far more than the small piece of bread which moved me to tears at the time. In receiving the bread, Victor Frankl cries tears of hope. Now bread is also an important catalyst of hope in today's scripture lesson. Today's narrative is full of drama and wonder, irony, misunderstandings, a great reversal, and good. Good, good. Let's make that great news. All of our components of a powerful, powerful story. Our lesson begins on the first day of the week, just hours after the women discover the tomb where Jesus' body had been buried is empty. We meet two disciples, Cleopas and a, another unnamed disciple, who are leaving Jerusalem and walking away from the disaster of Good Friday and the puzzlement of Easter on a seven-mile trek to Emmaus. But why are they leaving Jerusalem when most of Jesus' disciples had remained there in, 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 in hiding? And why are they going to Emmaus? We don't really know. But as they walk along, they're trying to talk it out. Talk about all that had happened in Jerusalem in the last days. And as they walk and as they talk, the risen Jesus comes along the road and walks with them. But Luke tells us that their eyes were kept from recognizing him. Their own doubts and fears blend with divine action, blinding the two disciples from the obvious. Jesus has come to them as a stranger. In a striking, ironic moment, the stranger asked the two disciples, what are you discussing with each other while you walk along? They asked the stranger, are you the only stranger in Jerusalem who does not know the things that have taken place there in these days? What things? The stranger asks. Who doesn't know what has been happening in Jerusalem? It's all over the news. It's everywhere on Facebook. It's a trending topic on Twitter. Cleopas wonders if their fellow traveler has been living in a cave for the last few days. But he tells the stranger the story of what has happened to Jesus of Nazareth from their hopes for him to his tragic crucifixion and death and the bewilderment of the empty tomb, and even the rumors that Jesus is alive again. He shares their dashed hopes with the stranger. We had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. We had hoped. 
we invested our hopes in him. But he was not who we hoped he would be. There's no reason to stick around in Jerusalem any longer. But it's clear that the disciples really never had a, a grasp of Jesus' true identity and mission. And now the stranger tells them about a longer journey. Oh, how foolish you are and how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have declared. Then the stranger asks, was it not necessary that the Messiah should suffer these things and then enter into his glory. We might hear Jesus' question and think, Jesus has redeemed Israel by his death and his resurrection. And of course, you are correct. But that's not who the two disciples on the road, or the disciples, the fellow, their fellow disciples, for that matter, thought Jesus was. They had hoped Jesus was someone else. They wanted Jesus to be the new king of Israel, the one who would overthrow the Romans and their puppet king, Herod. But Jesus is more, isn't he? He's the savior of the world. The two disciples are on their way to Emmaus because the coronation of a new king that was supposed to happen in Jerusalem has been canceled because this supposed new king, the one that they had hoped would redeem Israel, has been crucified. But starting with the journey of God's people from liberation in Egypt under Moses to the time of the prophets and through all the signs all along the way, the stranger walks them through God's plans for God's people and the things about God's Messiah, including the Messiah's death and resurrection. It was necessary that these things happen. I wonder how often we miss and don't recognize Jesus in our midst, even when he's right in front of us, just like the two disciples. We think we know Jesus pretty well, but here's the thing. Might we also fail to recognize him in the face of strangers, even when he's right in front of us? Because even with Jesus private study session, Cleopas and the other disciple, they remain clueless about who the stranger is. And as they near Emmaus, the two disciples invite the stranger to stay the night and to share a meal. And the stranger agrees to be their guest. But as they sit at the table, roles are reversed and Jesus does something that you just didn't do in Middle Eastern culture. The stranger, the guest becomes the host. He becomes the host of the meal just like he had done just day before, days before in an upper room. And he takes bread and he blesses it and he breaks it. And he gives it to them. And in doing so, their sorrow is turned to joy. And their unbelief is turned to, uh, to, to recognition. Suddenly their eyes are open. And they recognize that it is the risen Jesus who has been walking and talking with them all along. And Jesus vanishes from their sight. They say to one another, were not our hearts burning within us while he was talking to us on the road, while he was opening the scriptures to us. The two disciples no longer harbored any doubts about Jesus' resurrection. 
And that very same hour, they start back to Jerusalem with a new hope and a new future. Emmaus no longer is their destination. Back to Jerusalem they go. And they proclaim to the others what has happened on the road and how Jesus had been made known to them in the breaking of the bread. Jesus appears as a stranger and he delivers clarity about the scriptures. Jesus appears as a guest and delivers an opportunity to serve. Jesus appears as a host and delivers himself. Jesus is alive. So hope is alive. Jesus is the hope that we proclaim. We are at our very best when we walk with Jesus and we recognize that our lives are a journey of following him in spite of risks and challenges. While it may be easier for us to focus on our personal relationship and a personal savior, that's not the faith, and the life that you and I are being called to by Jesus Christ. Our faith is meant to be on the move, to go and to give and to direct the world toward heaven and the good news of Jesus Christ. In fact, we prove the resurrection of Jesus as we respond to the gift of of Jesus that each of us has been given. And as we tell others what has happened to us and how Jesus has been made known to us, someone that you know needs to know the hope of Jesus. They need to hear the hope of Jesus from you and the hope that you have in Jesus. They need you to proclaim that hope is alive. Proclaim hope and proclaiming Jesus is, is what Easter people and what disciples of Jesus do. We proclaim in word and in deeds that the Savior of the world is alive. He is risen. He is risen indeed. Let us pray. Mysterious and divine presence, too often our hearts burn within us because our bodies know before our minds that you are here working in us and through us in this world. Open our eyes and help us to recognize you in all the places and in all the people. And for the sake of the one whose present is never far, help us to proclaim you risen from the grave so that others too may know your magnificent presence and hope. Give us your strength and courage to proclaim hope is alive in Jesus. Amen. Church, as a body of Christ, we are to go out from this Sunday, staying at home, wherever you may go, to respond to what we've heard today, to respond to Christ, to respond to and live out the hope that we are given through Easter. So now I ask you, together as the church body, to respond to what we have heard from the Word of God through affirming our faith together.
Please join me. We believe in an Easter God who transforms darkness into light, hatred into tolerance, despair into hope. We believe God is always working for good, changing every Good Friday nightmare into an Easter dream of new possibilities. We believe in the risen Christ who befriends us on the roads of searching and worry, who touches us through song and silence, word and gesture, who calls us by name to enter the dance of life. We believe in the Spirit, the hidden presence behind every resurrection, who beckons us to leave tomb-like safety and trust the gracious invitation to live joyfully. We believe in the Spirit is always renewing the church and making us a people who practice kindness, encourage beauty, and work for justice and freedom. We believe we are an Easter people, a sign that with God all things are possible. I encourage you to remain online following our postlude for a time of chat. What we will be talking about will certainly be your prayer requests, but also we will be talking about outdoor worship and some of the results from our survey. Now receive this benediction. The Lord is risen. He is risen indeed. Therefore go in the power of Jesus Christ to work and to live and to love and to serve. Go in the peace of God now and forever. Amen.